Headache, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, tiredness, loss of appetite, upset stomach, feeling unsteady, shortness of breath. And there's there's a lot of those symptoms that I think. This is 45 US dollars. Correct. It's not cheap getting Western trained doctors in full clinics out to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we have to charge something. Do you guys like check vitals or anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Well, we can check your oxygen and your heart rate for 100 rupees. Yeah, I want to see if I was dehydrated or not. Yeah, I'll, I'll just check it. Okay. Why not? I don't mean, I'm not trying to discourage you. No, no. I'm happy to collect money. It's only 100 rupees. <laughs> it's not yeah. a big deal. <laughs> Where are you guys from? We're from the States. I'm from Minnesota. He's from California. Cool. New Jersey. New Jersey. How long uh, have you been here for? Uh, two weeks. This is your yeah. oxygen level 90, which yeah. is normal at this altitude. Actually, probably higher than average. And that's your heart rate 81, 82, which is normal at any altitude, including this one, where people's heart rates are usually faster than that sea level. Okay. So these are normal. I mean, you can, you know, you could still be like mildly dehydrated or a little dehydrated, like yeah. someone young and healthy. You know, the first sign would just be like thirst and just fatigue. All that tends to happen before your heart rate will really climb. Right on. Yeah. We also do a free lecture here at 3 p.m. He, yeah, he, he took it already. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so it's every day, but um, we go over altitude stuff. But Okay, what was your name? John. John, thank you. My hands are a little soapy. That's okay, I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, John. Have a good one. Okay, so it's day eight. We're still in Manang. We took uh, day seven. I took completely off because I wanted to recover. Because two days ago I left off basically with me saying I just puked. I puked, which isn't good. And then I stopped recording for the rest of the night. Took the whole day off. During that time, Chris and I did a lot of research when it comes to altitude sickness, when it comes to food poisoning, because those seem to be the two likely uh, possibilities of what I was getting sick from. Chris went to a seminar here in Manang. They do it every single day, which is really informative. So he learned a lot about altitude sickness. And then basically we took the symptoms from food poisoning and altitude, altitude sickness and cross-examined them based on what I had. And it seemed to be pretty clear that I had food poisoning, which was nauseous, vomiting, diarrhea, excessive, excessive, <laughs> stomach pain. And then cross-examining that with altitude sickness, which is more of like headache, a Nausea and vomiting, dizziness, tiredness, loss of appetite, upset stomach, feeling unsteady, shortness of breath. And there's there's a lot of those symptoms that I didn't think that I necessarily had, although I may have a, a few of those. I think at this altitude, everyone kind of feels a little bit of altitude sickness. But frankly, having that, feeling that, and also getting food poisoning, I could still have a minor form of altitude sickness. It's just something that we can't really diagnose ourselves. But based on one day off, I feel much better. So. Frankly, I feel like we're okay to keep on going, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go not too far today. Just a, just a wee bit of a way to to Licho Lake. That's the the highest, biggest lake in the world. Which is really high. It's about five thousand meters high. Unfortunately, I think there's actually one other lake between like Bolivia. One of the other countries that's high. No, it's the first highest biggest. So it's the biggest in volume and highest. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think uh, one other side note, um, when it comes to altitude sickness and part of why we're taking it slow today, is if you have any type of fatigue, if you're sick, if you have a cold, anything like that, that can just make the altitude sickness problems worse. It can bring it on. Yeah. So we're going to take it slow and see what happens. I'm going to be honest with them. If anything that does happen to me, or if I'm feeling any kind of symptoms, I'll tell Chris and we'll act responsibly. But it is good to be, you have to be very serious at this altitude. Like it's life or death, basically. People get sick up here all the time and if you're not educated on it, then you're doing a disservice to yourself. So uh, we're going to take it slow. But not to worry, only 1 in 30,000 people actually die from altitude sickness. Like, at least on this one track. Okay, yeah. 1 in 30,000. 1 in 30,000 trackers. I'm like a little anxious because being a little bit fatigued or not being as strong as I was a few days ago and then going to an even higher altitude than we've been to already is just dangerous for altitude sickness. So, a little anxious. So, we're going to take it slow. I've said that enough. Okay, so you ready? Also, another thing that's pretty, pretty crazy and it was actually bound to happen was getting food poisoning. I mean, I've been traveling for like a year and I haven't gotten sick from food one time, so it's bound to happen. It's just the fucking the worst place to 
get food poisoning. Or it can be confused with altitude sickness. Something that I swear by, anytime I feel like a meal is funky, drink a Coca-Cola. I think we did, I think you did say that in one of the earlier episodes too. You, you take some of this and Coke is so bad for you that it kills all of it. We're with a bunch of French people here and they, are, they were actually saying the same thing about a Coke. And so. they're doctors. They are doctors. <laughs> so maybe that's a little home remedy for you guys. Okay, day eight. We're back on the trail again. On the trail again. <laughs> back on the trail again. Joe, here we go, don't you know? Nice, Let's dude. Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, we have a new, we have a new flag. Oh, uh, yeah. What flag is that? Red, white, and blue. That's, yeah, America. <laughs> oh, God. That's someone American would say. We almost lost the drone, didn't we, buddy? Holy crap. It started falling a little bit, and then it started doing like, started going like, falling to the ground. It just went boom, boom, boom. And then it started to gain its uh, propellers back, and it started hovering down here. It took, it took a while for it to raise up and get to our level, and Chris was gonna catch it, and he slipped. It was so dramatic. <laughs> the poles were laying down right here, and I like stepped back, I was like, oh! <laughs> it was so dangerous. And then we look at it, and the battery is literally halfway out of the drone. I'm sorry, not halfway, it's sliver. Like, it's not fully connected, but I think it still works. <laughs> we'll try it again. stopped here in King Star. This is where we thought we were gonna stay for tonight, but apparently there's a place that's two hours ahead. It's not too far, not all the way to base camp, and we're gonna trek up there, because we're feeling okay. His knee is not feeling too well. I'm better, I think I'm better off than you are right now. I feel 100% for this. I've decided to go back to buying waters, which is terribly horrible for the environment here, but it's like a safe, I know it's a safe option that I'm putting in my body, so I'll just do it temporarily. I learned that iodine tablets, they're effective, but they're not 100% effective. There is a chance sometimes that you know, certain bacteria gets there. So might as well not risk what I already have going on down here. Be safe. I care about the environment, but I'm trying to be safe about my own personal health. Okay, we've been climbing for a little bit now. I'm trying to keep you guys updated, but it's hard when it's so high up. This is what we're looking at right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've decided to stay here in Shakar, I think is the name. This little place. Okay, so that place is full, so hopefully there's another tea house up here. Should we try this place? This is the only other place. Let's say, do you have a room? Okay, Chris, how far did we go? Eight kilometers. He's not too happy about that. It is what it is. It is what it is. I think we could have mustered up the strength to go to uh, Tolicho base camp, but on the way, it's maybe about two and a half hours, but on the way there's a really serious landslide area that you should do in the morning because it's too, too windy, it could cause a landslide during the day. Also, we chose not to go there because we might not be able to sleep on a bed, and I just personally wanted a place to, to stay and not have to sleep on the floor in a dining hall. So bed is really nice, huh, bro? Okay, yeah, at least we agree on that. We're also not too pumped because tomorrow we're just gonna go to base camp and then chill there for a day, so it's only a two hour hike and it's almost like a wasted day. Like we could have gone the rest of the way today, but I think we've made our peace with it. We'll try and make the best of it like we always do. Just as, as long as we take it slow and safe and responsible, I believe we have totally eliminated the Annapurna base camp trek. Amazing Annapurna base camp Harley. I think the goal is now to do the full circuit 
Yeah, that's the goal. Okay. Dude, my stash is coming in so nice. <laughs> Everything else, not so much. Oh, it just it doesn't grow yet. Should we get some food? <laughs> Should we get some food? Yep. Early dinner. Go to bed early. That's what you're thinking. I was thinking maybe... What time is it? It's only two, bro. <laughs> I can go to bed at five. <laughs> I could too. I think I could too. I think maybe we should stay up a little bit later, play a game of uh, asshole, play some asshole with everybody. That might be you nice. You want to with everyone's asshole? Just a small town girl, living in a lonely world. She took a midnight train going anywhere. That's nice. <laughs> I can do better. Yeah, it's okay, but I was just trying to be nice to you. Oh, thanks. Because sometimes I'm nice. For once. Yeah, sometimes I'm nice. For once. There's a reason why I chose him to come with. It's because, okay, I want to be nice, all right? I chose him to meet me out here in Nepal because he's a, a nurturing soul, very generous, and very selfless. And single. <laughs> this view doesn't suck. Nope. It's actually pretty nice. Mm. I love the way they spelled souse. S. O-U-S-E This uh, sound like a sauce Tomato <laughs> sauce Okay, so this is actually a dangerous route because this is a major landslide area. We have to cross it, and you're supposed to cross it during the morning because then it makes it uh, less likely that it'll cause a landslide from the wind, and it's already really windy, so it's very dangerous. What are you doing? 